Um, I think uh, we met six years ago, 2006, and um, I really have f um, felt inspired by you, by your leadership the last six years, and um, um, I am uh, very happy to be now with you in this Earth Charter Dialogue, and uh, let me ask you the first question. You've been a leader for a very long time in uh, the spotlight as Prime Minister of the Netherlands and also as an eminence Gries when you were, min of, well, still you are Minister still of Greece. State. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and in the 90s, you started writing the Earth Charter with a lot of people. And my question is, how did that influence your leadership feelings, your vision towards leadership? It helped me a lot because indeed I was 21 years in politics and that is a special world. When I came out, I found time to connect with other circles and to reflect a little bit on the certain things. So it changed me a lot. It opened for me windows. But to be frank, uh, Tineke, you played a role as well because when we met, you were on the point of Making, writing a book of a, a world to gain, and you explained that, your ideas that to go for Earth Charter values. Um, that would be very worthwhile, and you started this by interviewing a number of people. And I saw this happening, and I sensed this was a special effort, very interesting, not so much academic, but as Princess Irene said, you gave people an opportunity to speak out of their heart why they were motivated to go for another way of life, for another world. So I must say here, this was impressive, because what Tineke did, there's a world to gain, there's a world to win, later is taken by the Social Economic Council in the Netherlands as the subtitle of their report. It was not very clean, I would say, to do that, <laughs> simply. But it worked. And uh, maybe it's right that there is still a, some time to go, but it is growing now. And if he can, as was just said, um, accentuate more that it has to come from the inside, and we see that the spirituality plays a role, uh, then we'll go further. But i take you back to the second thing we did together. It was introduced a little bit, the inspiration for global governance. In, my friends, in 2008, it was 60 years ago that we had the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And then we, together with a professor in Tilburg, got the idea to compare the documents. 1948, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. 60 years later, the Earth Charter. And it was fun to do that together, because we concluded, of course, we have to go on with the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. But we discovered a few interesting differences. The first is that this was written 60 years ago to accentuate declarations of independence after colonization. People wanted to be free. Declarations of independence. And we said, maybe now people feel, but we are dependent of each other. This is different. The second is that we started to learn the dimensions of the next generations. That is, in fact, the sustainability, the children, grandchildren, and so on. And we noted that we are now living in a world of diversity. Diversity was not in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So we see the differences. Different type of governance, I said a few words on that. And finally, and very important too, spirituality is coming back on stage. So we put that in this inspiration for global governance. And I'm grateful to you, Tineke, that I had already a little bit got interest in all those things, but you assisted a lot. We did a job, and so it went on. But now you have to tell me something, because you are a smart girl, and for that reason, I guess, you decided to study law. Pooh, law, but 
what is the connection between this dull law <laughs> and nature? Where is your feeling? Can you explain a little bit? Yes, of course. So dull law, that's the feeling <laughs> of an economist, I guess. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, as um, a child, I already felt strongly about justice, fairness, and I had a very deep interest in nature. And I think that I decided to study law. Also, it was uh, law and psychology. I did two studies, one and a half study. At the same time, was to find out how law could help in, yeah, explaining the the feeling of fairness. How. Can you create a fair world? Why is it so that when you're born in a rich country, it's easy to live an easy life? And when you're born in a country at war or a country that is very poor, you have a lot of disadvantages to live your life, actually. So for me, the challenge in studying law was to find out what's the rule of law. I mean, law and justice, fairness, similar words. And after this study, I uh, tried as a lawyer to find out how the economy worked and how, rule, how law played a role in the economy and whether that would bring fairness. Well, that's not always the case, as we can see around us. And um, I think that um, we together, working on the mediation project, we also found out that law sometimes can be the source of conflict, that it at least not offers the solution. Um, this was this complex conflict between the Dutch and the Indian government and a lot of uh, companies and uh, NGOs and campaigning organizations and unions. And you were asked by the, all these parties actually to become the mediator in this complex fight. And I was looking through the lens, the legal lens, like what are the standards on the basis of which we could find solutions for this conflict. Um, Indian law, Dutch law, international law, ILO principles, but you suggested something else, and I learned from that. Maybe